Good evening and welcome uh, to our Good Friday service. Normally we would have gathered together at St. Columbus South Church. However, tonight we are at our own homes. Whether we are alone or with family, may this be a time of reflection and remembrance of what Jesus did for us on the cross on Calvary. Tonight is always a very special service, a service of reflection and a service of remembrance. And therefore we start our service with a prayer. Let us pray. Saviour of the world, what have you done to deserve this? And what have we done to deserve you? Strung up between criminals, cursed and spat upon, you wait for death and look for us, for us whose sin has crucified you. To the mystery of undeserving suffering, you bring the deeper mystery of unmerited love. Forgive us for not knowing what we have done. Open our eyes to see what you are doing now, as through wood and nails, you disempower our depravity and transform us by your grace. Amen. Tonight we will be journeying with Jesus as he performed those last acts, those last words on the cross. The seven words on the cross reminds us of what Jesus spoke and the implication of it all. We will reflect each time we read uh, from uh, the Bible, uh, we will reflect through him 376. And each verse, whether you are reflecting on it, whether you are singing it along, whether you are just reading the words, will bring us into the communion with Christ. We are not able to share communion uh, uh, over this weekend but through our reading through our reflection through our prayers we stand in communion with god and with each other and in 376 highlights what is happening on the cross it highlights what we celebrate during communion it highlights the words that have that started already on the thursday evening and pulls through like a golden thread uh, the act of communion, but also the act of the selfless sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf on the cross. So may these seven cross words and may these words of reflection in our hymn help us to understand something of the passion and love that Jesus showed for each one of us. But before we start with our readings, let us sing together. Him three nine seven. Him three nine seven in the cross of Christ I glory. Let us sing.
invite you to join in the seven words that Jesus spoke upon the cross. We will reflect through our readings in the Bible and then sing one verse of hymn 376. If you don't want to sing along, just reflect on the words and uh, to bring us into the, the understanding of what happened on that day, to bring us closer to, to Jesus and his sacrifice but also to help us to understand a deeper meaning for ourselves knowing that we are now free because of the sacrifice Jesus made on our behalf. The first word that Jesus spoke upon the cross was Luke 23 verse 34. Father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing our reading. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching. And the other rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. Let's reflect on him 376 verse 1. <laughs> second word comes from Luke 23. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve but this man has done nothing wrong then he said jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom and jesus spoke his second word in verse 43 jesus answered him truly i tell you today you will be with me in paradise. Let us reflect on the second verse of hymn 376. <laughs> on the cross comes from John chapter 19 from verse 25 near the cross of Jesus stood his mother his mother's sister Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby he said to her woman here is your son and to the disciple here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. We continue with him 376, 
Jesus spoke again on the cross in Matthew 27 from verse 45. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge and filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. We reflect on these words through him 376 verse 4. Later, not knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture may be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of a hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. These words Jesus spoke in John 19, verse 28. And we once again reflect on Jesus saying, I am thirsty, from him 376, verse 5. John 19, verse 30, Jesus spoke and said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. We reflect on these words, It is finished, through him, 376, verse 6. last word on the cross we get from Luke chapter 23 verse 44 it was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon for the Sun stopped shining 
and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. Praise be to God for his holy word. As you reflect on this Good Friday, we are once again reminded about the Old Testament, the sacrifice of the Passover lamb in the Old Testament, as Aaron, the first high priest, was tasked once a year to go into the holiest of holiest places, covered behind a curtain, to sacrifice the Passover lamb to God. That sacrifice established a new relationship between God and his people. It meant that God took away the sins of his people. It also meant that the relationship between God and Israel was renewed. The sacrifice of a lamb was the way that the people not necessarily appeased God, but was reminded that they needed to sacrifice something to as a sign of a renewal of their relationship with God. It was a sign of renewal in their faith, renewal in their following of, of God. And as I said, once a year, the high priest would enter. And later on, when the temple was built in Jerusalem, that continued. Once a year, on Passover, the high priest would bring the sacrifice to God to to make sure that the people knew that their sins were forgiven and that there was a new start with God on that feast. It's therefore not lost on us that then when Jesus died on the cross, that that curtain that was the, the, the presence, the remembrance, the sign of the division between God and his creation, God and humanity, was now torn in two. Now the temple was open. The temple was open for everyone. The place that was once sacred, holy, was now extended to all of God's people. Not only the high priest, but each one of us was now invited to come into the holiest of holiest, to be in a pure relationship with God. This was also the final sacrifice. We don't sacrifice in the church because Jesus was indeed 2000 years ago, the ultimate sacrifice. Through him, the Hebrew writer says, he was the ultimate high priest. He came into our world, showed us God's love, showed us God's salvation, and he became the lamb of God, the one that reconnected God with his people. This reconnection meant that God could now work with us not only once a year, but each and every day. That God was now not only present in the temple or through sacrifice, but that he was present or he is still present in our lives through the Holy Spirit and his word. It is also not lost on us that it wasn't the high priest of that day. It wasn't the, the educated religious leaders of that day that that when Jesus died on the cross made the following uh, witness it was the Roman centurion the so-called Gentile the one that was loathed by the Israelites the one that was the outcast on the religious uh, uh, sector of of his day the one that would have not worship God, but would have worshipped Caesar, the one that did not knew, know about the sacrifice that God has made, or perhaps even the story of God freeing his people of Egypt, from Egypt. But in the centurion, we hear the message, surely this was a righteous man. And suddenly, what might have been and must have been a sad Friday 
becomes Good Friday. The message of the centurion that Jesus wasn't only a righteous man, but was also the son of God. We read that the centurion praised God. He said, this is a righteous man. This man who made it possible for us to reach God through the curtain that once divided us from God. The Lamb of God, the Son of God, as Jesus is also know, known as the Son of Man, He is the ultimate sacrifice. He was now, He was now the one that bridged the divide between us and God. And now, it was finished. Jesus said that he commit his spirit to God. And in the same way today, we can commit ourselves to God. We can, we can commit ourselves to God knowing that it has all been done. The ultimate sacrifice, God's salvation through Jesus, the bringing us closer to him, as we reflected in the words of him 376 that with love to all the cup is fraught let each partake the sacred brought through latest ages let it pour in memory of my dying hour yes through the communion cup through our communion, through the fellowship that we share with Christ, through the story, through what we have just heard and perhaps experienced, we become part of this great salvation work of God. We become part of God's story. And we are now united, not through the communion cup tonight, but through our shared faith in the knowledge that Jesus renewed us, renewed it for us on the cross. As we celebrate Good Friday today, as we remember everything that happened, as we reflect and perhaps reflected during the day, may we know that it was done for us. We are now one in Christ, as Jesus prayed in, in John 17. And may this be the sustaining message as we look forward beyond the cross now to the grave, an empty grave. May you have a thoughtful Good Friday. But no, this is not the end of the story. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we reflect on all these events, all these words, what we have sung, may it bring us closer to you tonight. May we be reminded that the sacrifice on Calvary was for us and that we are now part of this great story. Lord, we pray tonight that although we are far apart, we are close to one another through your fellowship and through your spirit. Therefore, Lord, bring us also closer to one another as we look towards Easter Sunday and knowing that you will bring us closer to you once again. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, we pray this. Amen. Thank you for sharing uh, this few moments uh, with, with each other this evening. I hope that through the readings and through the hymn, the hymn, the golden thread of communion um, connecting us to the events on the cross. Perhaps we will also be reminded that also on Easter Sunday we are together in Christ. So may I invite you, if you want to, uh, I know that the daffodils are all out of the garden. Place a few daffodils in your window. Let us brighten up today. Let us remember that Easter Sunday is the day of, of not only reconciliation, but it's the day of new life. So put a daffodil in your window. Let us all share the wonderful message of Easter Sunday. And therefore, may the blessing of 
God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us now and evermore. Amen. Good night.